Well, that was JJ Harder. And for more on this, we're joined by Shashank Joshi, who's a Middle East analyst from the Rural United Services Institute. Thanks very much for talking to BBC World. We heard Jim Muir describe there that the tanks uh, went in to Hama and have seemingly now come out. And it's, it's just such a significant place because obviously of the events in 1982. That's right. Well, the, the, the city of Hama evokes immediately the massacre that took place there uh, back in 1982. On that occasion, several hundred times more people were killed than have been killed so far. But symbolically, we're seeing something very, very similar take place now with Hama really develop as a symbol, as a token of resistance to the Assad regime. Uh, what we're seeing so far is a stalemate, but it's very, very fragile. At any moment, we could see the government break through, penetrate the middle of the city and kill many thousands of more people. So do you think this is, I, I don't want to say a turning point, but something maybe of a significant moment if the army is backing out? Mm -hmm. No, I think we should resist uh, calling this either a victory for the protesters or a victory for the government itself. On the one hand, we have to remember the capital city, Damascus, has not been subject to the same protests as elsewhere. The city of Aleppo, a very important city, has not seen the same protests. So the protesters cannot yet say this movement is about to topple the government, but the government is now facing a really dangerous period because when Ramadan begins, you're going to see Syrians congregate every single day against the government. There will be new focal points of resistance. And the government is going to be in a very precarious position, which is why it's actually begun this movement today, to preempt anything that happens there. What we're seeing is a very, very ugly stalemate. Now, of course, the situation in Syria is very different to, say, Libya or Egypt. The army is inherently incredibly yeah. loyal to the president. Well, it's completely different. On the one hand, it's different to Libya because it's a unified, strong army that's not going to break down like the Libyan army did in Benghazi. It's unlike the Egyptian army because it's much more loyal to the regime itself. Of course, the bulk of the units we're seeing fighting today in Hama are Alawite units, Alawites being the sect to which the president himself belongs. So in a secular in a secular sectarian sense, it's much more bound closely to those at the top of the regime, and therefore it has much more incentive to fight to the death. Now, just, just briefly, if, if, if you can, the international community, of course, is watching. We're hearing what the US is saying about this. What can they actually do about this? Nothing. The angry words we're seeing from the press attaché in Damascus symbolize the futility, the, the, the simply impotence the US has in this matter. And that's for two reasons. Number one, the UN and the Arab League is not going to sanction a Libya-style intervention. And number two, Assad has lived for many years under very tight sanctions. He'll live for many more years under these again. And we think about the people in Syria, you call them protesters, difficult to describe them as rebels, they're, they're in an incredibly weak position. Uh, I think they're at a point where over the next month or so we may see armed resistance coalesce, but now they are fighting under extremely difficult conditions against a regime equipped with far better tanks, far more armed personnel carriers, more soldiers than the Libyans did in places like Benghazi in the east of Libya. Shashank Joshi from Rusi, thank you so much for speaking to BBC World. Thank you.